I call the member for Holt. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. I rise today to support the member for Carroll's motion, which uh, recognises, I think, the tragedy of the floods in May, which affected Serbia, Bosnia, Herzegovina and Croatia. We've obviously heard and we've spoken about how it's killed many people, some over 40 people. And it was particularly due to this low pressure system called Yvette that brought the heaviest rain to Serbia and, and Bosnia and Herzegovina in 120 years of recorded weather conditions and measurements. We've also heard about the floodwaters that have caused over 2,000 landslides across this region and also the many, many thousands of homes that have been toppled or submerged in the mud. I've also been advised that this has affected some 1.6 million people in Serbia and Bosnia after a week of flooding, with many being evacuated from their homes in both countries. Now, in my home state of Victoria, it's home to over 7,000 people that were born in Serbia. In my electorate, there is a large and active Serbian community. I know many have been affected, deeply affected, by these floods. Many have loved ones and families back home that have been affected. And in response, I'd like to commend this particular community and other communities, like the Bosnian community, who have rallied together, and they've rallied together in institutions like the Serbian Orthodox Church of St. Stephen in Karam Downs, St. Stephen Serbian Orthodox Church in Keysborough, and the Serbian Springvale White Eagles Football Club in organising fundraising events in recent weeks to raise money for people and provide urgent humanitarian aid to those that have been affected. In particular, as reported in the Dananong Journal, parishioners from the Keysborough Serbian Orthodox Church have donated more than $230,000 to help victims. Yeah. Father Chedomir Vitakanik of the, the Keysborough Serbian Orthodox Church said in this paper that hundreds had pledged this extraordinary sum at an emotional meeting at the church last month in response to the com uh, continuing humanitarian disaster in Serbia, Bosnia, Herzegovina and Croatia. It was also reported, and it's to be commended, that the Dananon Council had contributed $10,000 to this aid's effort. Father Chedomir has said that it may take five to ten years and millions, it's probably billions of dollars, to rebuild, so every donation will make a difference to reconstruction in this part of the world. Local Serbian residents, Rodenko Mikhailovic and Slobodan Todic, have conveyed to me the vital need for financial aid for even simple matters like Serbian school children to assist them with uniforms and books at the start of the year in September. Many school children have had their clothes and books washed away. So these children need books and they need clothing. That's why they need this, this aid, this targeted aid. Now I'd like to say with both Rodenko and Slobodan have been running the Serbian program on the KC Radio 3SER 97.7 FM, that's a bit of advertising there, from 8am to 9am each Wednesday for the past 11 years. They've kept the local Serbian community updated with the latest news and events about the floods. Rodenko has also advised that his brother Dragan has had to relocate his family from Lodnica to the capital Belgrade to seek refuge from the floods, whilst his friend Elena had also fled Lodnica as her house had been washed away from the floods. And these are tangible examples of the local community being profoundly affected by the events that have occurred. Rodenko has also advised that one of the biggest challenges facing the Serbian government is the need to repair vital roads and bridges that link key towns and cities so that much relief can actually get to these people in need. According to the European Bank for Reconstruction, these floods in Serbia and Bosnia have cost some 3 million euros or $4.5 billion. Bosnian officials have said that the physical damage could exceed that of the Bosnian War of the 1990s. That's from the European Bank. Another significant issue arising from the flooding affecting those living in Bosnia is, as been mentioned by previous speakers, the risk of the undiscovered landmines from the war in the 90s. And these landmines could be moved by floodwaters and mudslides, increasing the risk to civilian populations, including to various sources up to 120,000 landmines remain in 9,416 marked minefields. The floods washed away riverbanks and fuelled landslides that have unearthed these minefield warning signs and in many cases the unexploded booby traps themselves. Um, an official at Bosnia's Mine Action Centre, Sasa Obradovic, said that his agency in light of the floods would deploy mine hunting, uh, hunting scouts. Since the war, 601 people have been killed and 1,121 were wounded as a consequence of these unearthed mines and that's quite substantial. So I'd like to welcome the, um, the international attention, but obviously we need to keep an eye on this. There are substantial groups of people that have been affected. It does affect the Serbian, Bosnian and Croatian diaspora that live in this country and make a wonderful contribution to this country. 
and it's been an, an honour on behalf of the Serbian community in particular to be able to raise this matter in this place today. Yeah.